at analytical geometry again this is our last um session when it comes to analytical geometry guys uh we have dealt with lots and lots of um questions from uh, tuesday up until today so today it's our last day if there are things that uh, you're still not comfortable with them um please let me know guys i'm here to help you um if you've got any questions by now you should be able to know how to calculate your distance our uh, features your length your midpoint your gradient uh, you need to know when they talk about perpendicular lines what do they talk about when they speak about parallel lines you know what they speak about um how to calculate an area of a certain um uh an area of a certain shape you know so that will depend on the question basically right okay boys and girls before i start with today's lesson always uh feel free to email me if you've got any question guys um at ngosi hector to eight at gmail.com uh also if you've got any questions regarding mathematics, uh, you can always uh, also um, uh, write your comments on the chat box. Then I'll just uh, look on what um, is your query or your question. Uh, today we'll be looking at um, November 2016, uh, question two. Yesterday we looked at November 2017. Uh, then day before yesterday, we look at November 2018. So today we're looking at November 2016. Question two, uh, it's another shape. It's a, we, we have dealt with a, um, a rectangular shape, a triangle shape. Today we'll be looking at a kite, you know, guys. Today we'll be looking at a kite uh, using analytical geometry. You need to know how to, um, what you call, uh, how to, uh, okay, I just want to read the comments here uh okay sorry before that uh i don't know what's happening okay okay just hang on guys okay i just want to read the chats okay i don't know what's happening uh you know those technology things i'm trying to read the chats okay just a second guys oh okay chats okay i don't know what's happening with the chat box today but if you've got any queries please feel free to write your query on your chat box then i'll read as usual then i'll try to answer you live today and now but if you've got any other questions you can always email me guys okay let's go to our today's uh session so with the today's session i just need to stop sharing and reshare again okay i can see the chats before i can start sharing mm, i need to reshare then share again okay cool so this is what we'll be looking at okay this is the memo i just want to take the question as it is uh-huh and let's make it bigger so that we can start with today's question and see how to interpret a kite right so we'll be looking at question three right of november 2016 right before we do that i want to check at the chats okay i want to check the chat box I don't know what's happening with the chat box. Uh, okay, I'm trying to open the chat box. It doesn't want to open for some reasons. Okay, I'll keep on uh, checking, guys. I, I really don't know what's happening with the chat box. Um, it doesn't want to open for some reasons. Uh, let me try one more time. Okay. Okay, okay, cool uh that's fine guys let's continue then okay 3.1 it says to you show that triangle abc with vertices we know that vertices are corners right a one is to one b three is to six 
and C six is to three is an isosceles triangle, right? Now, so we need to show that A, B, C with these vertices is an isosceles triangle. Basically, guys, you need to know what are the properties of an isosceles triangle in order for you to see that, okay, this is an isosceles triangle. What are the things that you need to know, right? So you wouldn't know whether it's an, it's an isosceles or not if you don't know the properties of an isosceles triangle, guys, right? So now, if you look here, uh, okay, let me just go here. Question 3.1. Okay. Okay. Remember, guys, an isosceles triangle, we know that two sides, they must be equal. Does it make sense, guys? So, two, so let's say now you've got a triangle. I'm just going to make a practical example. You've got a triangle. Triangle has three sides. Two sides, they must be equal, right? So you, now you must check, right? Basically, this is was for four marks. So you are supposed to check uh, that two sides of those three sides of that triangle, two of them at least are equal, you know? Uh, and if two sides are equal, that triangle will be regarded as an isosceles triangle. Does it make sense, boys and girls? Okay, cool. So what they did here, they have calculated the distance formula, right? Um, for A, B, and A, C, right? You can also do the B, C, right, to check. So if I were you in an exam, okay, Faith, I can see you've raised your hand. I'll be with you now, Faith. Yes, Faith. Hello, Faith. Faith, I've unmuted you. You can talk. Faith. Okay, it seems like Faith is not talking. I'm not sure what's happening. Faith, you raised your hand. You can talk, Faith. Okay, I don't know what's happening with Faith. Let me mute her again because it seems like she's not talking. Okay, cool. Oh, here's my chat box. Oh, okay. Uh, okay, before, let's, uh, okay. Uh, Carolina, Miss P. Uh, okay, I can see Miss P. I can see Nelly. I can see Zenel. Uh, okay, I can see Kavenda. I can see um, Homozo. Uh, hello, Homozo. I can see Stella. Um, okay, 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 I can see Palisa, okay, 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 that's perfect. Tercy, I can see you. Okay. Okay, that's perfect, guys. Okay. I can see Nelly also. Okay, cool. So now, um, we, we have to calculate the distance here for AB and the AC, but you can also calculate the BC, right? So now, both of them, I mean, two sides, they must be equal in order uh, for this triangle to be an isosceles. So now uh, they've calculated AB for us and they've also calculated AC for us, you know, and we got that it's root 29, root 29. Therefore, AB is equal to AC. Therefore, triangle ABC, it will be regarded as an isosceles triangle, right? Perfect. Now let's look at the main question, 3.2. With 3.2, it says in the diagram below, uh, ADCB is a kite, right? Is a kite. So I want to show you something, guys. Remember on Tuesday, you have dealt 
with what? With a triangle. Yesterday, you have dealt with a rectangular. Do you still remember? So you need to know all the properties of the shapes, right? And today, we are looking at a kite. So guys, in an exam, they can ask you anything. They can ask you a rhombus. They can ask you a parallelogram. Um, and you have learned your shapes, guys, from preschool, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, I can see, Tracy, um, you've raised your hand. Uh, let me unmute you. Yes, Tracy? Um, so, like, what do you mean the properties of the shape? What do I mean by what? The properties of the shape. So the properties of the shapes, you need to know um, um, how many sides does it have? Does it make sense? Oh, like the vertices and stuff. Yes, and also what is the area of a certain shape? Does it make sense also? Okay, so thank you. Right. Remember in grade 8 and grade 9, you, 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 you did all the shapes, you know, how to calculate the area, the perimeter. The perimeter, and, yeah. Yes, yes, do you still remember those, right? And you yes, need so. to know that, okay, um, let's say for a triangle, um, how many types of triangles do you have? You've got a right angle triangle, you've got a skeleton, you've got an isosceles. You need to know yes, in so. order for you, yes, in order for you to see an isosceles triangle, what are the things that you must look for? Does it make sense? In order for you yes. to see whether this is a right angle triangle, what are the properties that you need to look for? Does it make sense? So basically, you just need to, um, if, you, if, if you still have your grade nine or your grade eight textbook, please keep that because it has all the shapes, you know. It's just that now in grade 10, we do them in a mathematical format. Does it make sense? Where we analyze them. No wonder we call it an analytical geometry. Does it make sense? Yes, sir. Thank you. Are, are you clear? Do, do, do you get my point now? Are you following? Yes, I get your point. Okay. Perfect. Yes, sir. Always. Okay, cool. All right. So now, guys, um, we, here we are given a kite. This is a kite, right, guys? And we know that a kite, it has how many? Uh, vertices? It has four. Right, so it's one, two, three, four. But however, in the diagram below, they said A, D, B, and C, right? Is a kite, right? Where A, D is equal to D, C. So A, D is equal to DC, which means this is equal to that. Does it make sense? And AB is equal to BC. So AB is equal to BC, right? Meaning now this is equal to that. And this is equal to that. Does it make sense? D is a point such that AD, so AD is parallel to the x-axis. So AD is parallel to the x-axis, right? What do they mean when, there's something, when they say something is parallel, guys? Um, yesterday we've dealt with perpendicular lines and stuff, but what do you mean, what do we mean about parallel lines? What do we mean about parallel lines, guys? I know you can tell me, guys. Yes, I can see Palisa knows the properties of a kite, diagonals intersect at the right angles, two pairs of an adjacent sides equal. Perfect, Palisa, that's awesome. You're such a star, you know. Um, okay, what do we mean about parallel? Yes, uh, uh, Carolina, yes. Carolina says parallel lines, it's uh, lines, even Tino says like, it's two lines uh, that are the same distance apart from each other uh, and they never touch, right? That's what we mean about parallel lines. Oh, you guys are so awesome. Luna, I'm recognizing you. I'll be with you. I can see you have raised your hand. Okay. Let me just finish to read the statement. I'll be with you, Luna. Okay. Then it says A, which means now this 
is parallel to that. These lines, they'll never meet, right? Therefore, AD is equal to unit five. So AD is equal to unit five. CD is perpendicular to the x-axis. So C, CD, here CD is perpendicular to the x-axis. We know that if something is perpendicular uh, to the x-axis, what do we know about perpendicular lines? Aha, uh -huh. I can see you guys are shouting the answers by now. What do we know about perpendicular lines, guys? Aha, uh -huh. I'm still waiting, guys. Going once, going twice, uh, going thrice. Yes, perfect, Tracy, 90 degrees. That's perfect, right? That's perfect. Uh, that's how we, uh, we mean about perpendicular lines, right? You see, guys, practice makes perfect. The more you do lots of questions, it's the more everything is just going to make sense, guys, you know. And the diagonals in, uh, okay, the diagonals intersect at P. So all the diagonals, they intersect where? At P. Perfect. Okay, before we start with 3.2.1, I just want to go to Tino because you raised your hand so that I can be with Luna, not Tino. Yes. Uh, yes, Luna. Luna. Hello, Luna. Luna, I can't hear you. Okay, it seems like Luna, I don't know whether you lost your connection or not. Luna, can you hear me, Luna? Okay, that's perfect then. Okay, let me go see the comments one more time so that I can start. Okay, 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 that's perfect, guys. Let's continue. Okay, it says now 3.2.1. Show that the coordinates of C are 8 is to 0. Where is C? C is this, but you must show that this is 8 is to 0, right? So now we know already that uh, since C is on the x-axis, we know that Y is 0. Does it make sense, boys and girls? Perfect. So now we need to show whether it's 8 is to 0, its coordinates. Now, if you look at your solution here, uh, just a minute need to okay cool so now it says to you here ad is parallel to the x-axis they've told us that right therefore a and d have the same y coordinates right but ad is equal to five units that was given so the coordinate of d is eight is to five Therefore, CD is perpendicular to the x-axis, right? Therefore, CD have the same x-coordinates, right? Because they told us that CD, let me go show you the illustration. CD is perpendicular to the x-axis. So, CD, CD is perpendicular to the x-axis, right? And we're told that AD from here to there, it's actually five units. Does it make sense? So now, what you need to do now, guys, it says now C and D have the same X coordinate, right? But C lies on the X axis. Therefore, the coordinate of C, it will be what? It will be eight is to zero. Because now we know that point C is lying on the x-axis, basically, meaning your y will always be zero. If a point is lying on the x-axis, your y is always zero, right? If your point is lying on the y-axis, your x is always zero. I hope you know that by now, guys, right? Then now, if we look at the second question, it says to you, Write down the coordinates of P. So the coordinates of P are these ones. Can you see? This is 
the coordinates of P. Basically, P, it's a midpoint of what? Of A and C. Can you see, guys? Because it's in the middle of A and C. Basically, P is the midpoint of A and C. So you can calculate the midpoint of A and C. You would actually get point P because it's in the middle, guys. You know, uh, let me show you. Okay. Perfect. This is what they did here. P is the midpoint of A of C diagonal of a kite. Therefore, this is your midpoint formula. You know that by now. That midpoint formula says x2 uh, plus x1 over 2 is 2. Uh, y1 plus y2 over 2, right? Therefore, divide by 2, right? Therefore, point P, it's going to be 11 over 2 is 2, 5 over 2. So those are the coordinates of P. Does it make sense? Perfect. I love analytical geometry, guys. It's one of the chapters that I love in maths a lot. It just makes so much sense, you know? And I mean, I mean, you don't even have to be uh, told that P is the midpoint of A and C because for the fact that P is in the middle of A and C, by default or automatically you already see that this is the midpoint, you know, uh, because it comes from this vertex of D and it goes down to a vertex of B. So already it's in the middle of the shape, right? Remember in primary, you dealt with symmetry, right? So if you're doing a symmetry, they can write this shape for you, then they'll say, uh, continue and write this one. Symmetry, it's more of like a mirror. So when you fold your kite here, basically this side must be equals to that side. Therefore, no wonder P is the midpoint of A and C. Okay, I see some chats here. Okay. Okay, I don't know guys what's happening with the chat box today, actually, because it comes and go, it comes and go. Okay, when it comes, I'll go to it immediately. Okay, cool. Now, let's look at the uh, second question. Oh, no, I think I've closed the, um, I think I've closed the, the, just a second, guys, the actual question. Yeah. Okay, just need to increase it. Okay, cool. Okay, here we go again. All right, perfect. We are good to go now. 3.2.3, it says calculate the gradient of line BD. So the gradient of line BD, where is line BD? So this is B and that's D. Does it make sense? So basically you're supposed to calculate the gradient, right? So, and how many marks is this? Is two marks, right? Two marks, yes. The line of B, the gradient of BD. So we do have the coordinates of B. However, the coordinates of D are not given. However, because D and C, they share the very same X axis. And A and D, they share the very same Y point. So I can tell what is coordinate of D. Because we know that here it was eight. So coordinates of D, it's eight is to five, basically. Because we know C here, the X axis is eight. We know the Y here is five. So the coordinates of D are eight is to five. Does it make sense? Therefore, you've got two points, B, D. So you've got negative one is to negative four. And point D is eight is to five. So you've got two points. Therefore, you are good to go. It's going to be easier for you to calculate your gradient. 
does it make sense boys and girls so now if you look remember gradient is always changing y over changing x right so now if we look at the gradient formula it's this one remember now uh point b it was given straight away can you see but this one this is the one that we had to get it by observation right the point d we had to get it by observation boys and girls and i showed you that you actually had to analyze what is in your cartesian plane right so remember the gradient formula says y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 so y2 will start with five that's your five minus minus four we know that a minus and a minus is a plus so it's going to be plus four then x2 that's your x in d right minus minus one so we know a minus and a minus it's a plus so five plus four that's nine and eight plus one it's also nine so nine over nine it's one so the gradient of bd is positive one and yes guys remember i said to you everything that has the upward slope its gradient it's always what positive but you see guys if you can calculate downward slopes like your ac the gradient of ac its gradient will always be negative because now this is a downward sloping because now this is a downward sloping it goes like this it goes like this downward sloping but this one it's an upward sloping therefore the upward slope is gradient always always guys uh it's 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 uh, okay i can see um you have raised your hand i'll be with you the upwards one it's always positive the downwards one it's always negative okay i can see you've raised your hand i'll be with you now okay hello hello courtney courtney hello can you hear me hello Courtney, hello, hello, okay, it seems like you are not speaking, I'm not sure whether it's the connection problem or what, all right, okay, cool. That's perfect, guys. I can see you are already shouting the answers. That's super, super perfect. Right? That's super perfect. Guys, can you hear me? Just uh, show by the... Because uh, I can see Amy says, Sir, I cannot hear anything. So I'm not sure whether it's my connection or it's uh, her connection. Can you hear me, guys? Okay 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 it seems like everyone can hear me okay uh okay so amy i think you must fix your your your, your connection because everyone says they can hear me okay cool okay that's perfect all right 3.2.4 it says to you calculate the length of ac now it's for two marks they want you to calculate the length of AC. You know what is the coordinates of C? 8 is to 0. The coordinates of A, 3 is to 5. And I want to show you something interesting, guys. Remember I said, when they say calculate the length, you always use what? A distance formula. Even yesterday, uh, they've asked the very same question. They've asked the very same question, guys. And this was from 2017. The question was like to you, calculate the length of PQ. Leave your answer in set form. Does it make sense? Remember from yesterday, 
I said length, it's always you use your distance formula. Now, in 2016, how the examiner asked you, they just said calculate the length of AC. They did not specify whether you should leave your answer in set form or not, right? So you can, you can be flexible here. With this one, guys, you can always be flexible here and sort of um, give your answer in whichever way you want to give it to whether it's going to be in a set form or it's going to be in a um, decimal form, it's up to you because the examiner did not say anything. Whereas in 2017, basically, you were told that you must leave your answer in set form. So always, always, guys, read your questions carefully. Now, if you look at 3.2.4, Yes, you know that you must use what? You must use your um, distance formula because they wanted the length of AC. So you must substitute that as usual. And AC, you're going to get square root of 50. And guys, remember that the square root of 50, it can be written also as 7.07. .7. Even if you went further here and wrote um 7.07 because .7. the examiner here did not say leave your answer in a set form so here it was optional basically to leave your answer in a set form but it will depend with the question what do they want actually does it make sense boys and girls i can see a chat okay mm, i don't know what's happening with my chat box today guys yeah okay cool Let's look at this one. This one says calculate the area of a kite. A, D, C, B. Let's look. A, D, C, B. A, D, C, B. So basically, they want you to calculate the area of the kite. Right. Now, you need to know the area formula before you can calculate the actual area of the kite, guys. Without the area formula, unfortunately, you won't be able to calculate the area of the kite. Or I'll show you the, another way of calculating the area of the kite. You can always uh, sort of like cheat. Not cheat, but always, the, the, I mean, there are so many ways of calculating the area of a kite. Sometimes you already know the area of the triangle. It's half times base times height. So remember in a kite, you've got two triangles. It's this triangle and that triangle. So you can calculate the area of this triangle and the area of this triangle. Then add them, you're going to get the area of the kite, right? So if you look here, they did what I was saying. So basically here, they calculated, uh, hang on, oh, sorry. The BD, uh, the BD length, it was, not, it, it was not given. So basically they've uh, calculated uh, the, the length of BD. Now let's look at BD, right? And the length of AC was calculated. So B, D, right, right? They said multiply by A, C. So B, D times A, C half, basically, right? So they did like that, but first they had to get, to get the length of B, D and its square root of 162. Then the area is half B, D times A, C, basically, right? Um, or you can use the method that I've told you about of calculating the two different uh, thingy, uh, two different uh, triangles, then add them together. But this one also can work out, you know. At the end of the day, you're going to get um, 45. And that's your area of a kite. And remember, guys, here you are supposed to say this is the area in however, square meters. Remember, the area of a 2D is always in square uh, meters or um, 
whatever units that are given to you, right? Then another thing that I wanted to look at yesterday's question was, it was this one. No, actually it was this one. So this one, boys and girls, uh yeah it was this one it's the one that we did on tuesday here you were given a triangle and remember most of you were still confused with 2.3 right so 2.3 was saying to you determine with reasons the gradient of the line through t and midpoint of pr right so now the gradient determine with reasons the gradient through t so the gradient through t right um at the midpoint of pr where is pr so this is pr right so basically this was 3.2 because i got an email i think yesterday someone did not understand so I just want to go through it um right so basically uh you're calculating the gradient of qr and it's given by three minus open bracket minus two over six minus minus nine therefore you get what you get um five negative five over three right therefore this is the midpoint theorem right this is how they got right or you can use this formula or this working uh still this is uh the, the the midpoint of pr you can use the midpoint of pr you'll still arrive to the very same answer of which is negative five over three uh the person that emailed me i hope he, now you understand i just i did not want to reply you on the email but i thought maybe majority of you still are confused with this one you know and guys I just need to stop sharing and go back to my slides. Um, uh, reshare, share screen. Okay, cool. Okay, guys. Okay, just need to go back to my slides. So guys, please, 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 please don't forget guys to, um, to always um, email me if you've got any queries. I can see other people are always emailing me. I always uh, get your emails. But before we end today's lessons, I just want to check if you guys have any other questions. Um, uh, okay. Bye, Mbali. Mbali says good night. Say I'm going to sleep. Uh, okay. That's perfect. All right. All right. Okay, cool. All right, guys. Okay, now it's 22.04. I have to leave. I'll see you tomorrow, guys. If you've got any queries, guys, please, 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 please do not forget to answer me, right? Tomorrow, we'll be looking at some more um, uh, analytical geometry just for one last time. Maybe we can look at the parallelogram or we can look at the, I'm not sure which one we can look at, but I will just look for a question that has a different shape so that you can see um, how to answer other questions. Okay, guys, from my side, enjoy your rest of your evening. Goodbye.